They transferred 12. There is no scenario where that would be acceptable to do. Quadruplets, quintuplets, and even octuplets? Higher order multiples are becoming much more common and reality TV is obsessed with them. I'm Mama Dr. Jones and today we're discussing several sets of higher order multiples and how they came to be. How many babies can even fit into one uterus and how do they get there? Let's find out. First, we're talking about the Busby quintuplets. That's five babies, if you're keeping track. I've put them first because we have a little bit more information about how they came to be than some of the others, and they have a really interesting story to tell. They are famous for being the first set of surviving all-girl quintuplets born in the United States. And you may know them from their show on TLC called Outdaughtered, which ran from 2016 to 2021. Ava, Olivia, Hazel, Riley, and Parker were born to Adam and Danielle Budsby, and they have a big sister whose name is Blake. They have a pretty interesting story about how they came to be. So if you look back at the blog, I guess that Danielle, which by the way, all of you always freak out when you figure this out, but my name is also Danielle and yes, I do have a first name. Moving on. Adam and Danielle Busby had decided that they wanted to start a family, but unfortunately were having trouble getting pregnant. So they were working with their doctor to try and figure out what the cause of their infertility was. Adam had a semen analysis, which showed a low sperm count, which is, I think the parameter is under 5 million. Yes, you need a whole bunch of sperm to make a baby. And not only do you need a whole bunch, they need to be modal swimming well. And his unfortunately were both not enough and not swimming well. At the same time, she was found to have irregular ovulation or she wasn't ovulating as frequently as she should. When you're already working with lower sperm motility and sperm count, then obviously if you're not ovulating as frequently, these two things combined are going to lead to even lower rates of pregnancy. So they went ahead and went forward with something called ovulation induction, making her ovaries make more eggs and make more eggs more frequently and something called IUI or intrauterine insemination, which is basically taking a semen sample, spinning it down, and then putting it into the uterus with a little straw-like device and hoping that one of those sperm makes it up to the ovulation sites, which are in the ovaries. So after five cycles, they finally got pregnant on the sixth cycle, but they just got pregnant with one baby. And that is how Blake came to be. After Blake was born, they wanted to move forward with hopefully having another baby. So they did kind of the same process. And this time, when they went in with the positive pregnancy test, the ultrasound showed four sacs. So they thought they were pregnant with quadruplets. A couple of weeks later, they went back for follow-up and one of the sacs was found to have two embryos in it. So what we have here is a quad zygotic, so four separate zygotes, four separate embryos who all implanted. And in one of those embryos, before it implanted, it split into two. So they have a set of identical twins and then three other babies all growing in there at the same time. And by what has to be the most statistically unlikely thing to happen, I mean, I don't even know what would be comparable. Every single baby that they had in that uterus was a girl. The identical twins were girls, the other three babies were girls, and the older sister was a girl. So that's how their show Outdaughtered came to be. They were born on April 8th, 2015 at 28 weeks. And I can't find really what the indication for 28 week delivery is, but honestly carrying uh, that many babies 28 weeks is not unimpressive. All of the babies weighed between two pounds and two pounds, six ounces. It sounds like the baby spent about three months in NICU, but they all ended up doing quite well and went home and seem to be happy and healthy now. Next up are the Gosselin sextuplets. If you had a heartbeat and existed in the United States of America in the early 2000s, you most certainly have heard of this family. These sextuplets recently turned 18, but let's review how they came to be. They're famous for, I guess, everything that is that TLC show and all the things that came after it. There's not as much detail on how they came to be, but most of the sources say that Kate had PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is most likely causing her infertility by decreasing how frequently she ovulates and that they went forward with ovulation induction and IUI. There were a couple of sources that said IVF, but it is pretty unusual to get pregnant with higher order multiples through IVF. We will talk about one case in this series where that happened, but I would be willing to bet that 
Hers was ovulation induction with IUI or intrauterine insemination like we talked about with the Busby quintuplets. As I went through trying to give designations to all of these as far as like how many zygotes and chorionic, mono, amniotic, blah, 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 blah. I figured out that I think we just start saying they're polyzygotic at some point, meaning there were many zygotes, but as best as I can tell, these were all probably separate embryos, separate zygotes. So one sperm, one egg for each human that ended up being born out of this pregnancy, meaning they wouldn't be any more similar than you would be to your sibling, except that they were just born at the same time. Because of that, I am speculating, but I would assume that they also each had their own sac and own placenta. But again, I couldn't find this laid out in any of the research that I did. The birth sounds like it happened right around 30 weeks and was by C-section and they spent several months in the NICU, but I couldn't find a complete layout of exactly how long or what their struggles were. And they all weighed between two and a half and three pounds. So we're gonna take it back to quintuplets now. And these are some really interesting quintuplets to me because they are a New Zealand set of quints who was born in 1965. Having surviving quintuplets at that time was extremely rare. Even being pregnant with quintuplets at that time was extraordinarily rare, but especially surviving because the risks of prematurity with higher order multiples are quite high. And in 1960s, there was a lot of things that we can do now that we couldn't do back then. Their names are Sam, Selena, Shirlene, Lisa, and Deborah, and they were born to parents Sam and Ann Lawson and big sister Leanne. Apparently, Ann says that after the birth of Leanne, her first daughter, she stopped ovulating and they weren't really sure why, but there was a new medication which had come out, which was supposed to help with increasing ovulation. So she took that. It sounds like it was probably luprolide or clomiphene, which are both things that we still use today. And at the time just realized like, okay, I'm pregnant and she was growing really quickly and they didn't know why. So there was no ultrasound back then, or at least it wasn't very easily accessible back then. And they did an x-ray of her abdomen and they were able to identify four skeletons. So they said, okay, well, good news, you're pregnant with quadruplets. She didn't even know until they were born at 33 weeks, which is honestly kind of miraculous, especially in the 1960s, that she was actually pregnant with five babies and not four. One of the skeletons could not be identified on the x-ray because they were all overlapping so much. They were all born healthy and alive and got discharged from the hospital a couple of months later. And in fact, this was so rare at the time that the news article I was reading about it even went on to talk about a set of quints in Sweden who were born a week after this set and only one of them survived. So surviving as a quintuplet in the 1960s was just, again, honestly unheard of. I don't know what it is about all of these multiples we're talking about today, but a lot of them are girls. There's no detail on exactly how they were born. I have to assume it was by C-section and the family, particularly the mother's life and death has a very horrible story attached to it that I'm not going to dive into here, but I'll link some of the articles down below if you're interested to read more about them. Okay, back to contemporary times. We're moving on to Octomom. And if you do not know about this set of octuplets, please let me know in the comments down below because I swear that news of this pregnancy was inescapable back in 2009 when it happened. This set of multiples is famous for a whole lot of reasons, the happiest of which is that they're the first surviving set of octuplets that we know about. The more sinister reason is because the conception and birth of these babies actually led to a huge scandal being uncovered and a fertility doctor losing his license and being stripped of his board certification in California. We'll get to that in a minute. I actually feel like it could be a whole video. The octuplets were born to Nadia Solman and their names are Noah, Malaya, Isaiah, Nariah, Jonah, Makai, Josiah, and Jeremiah. They all share the middle name Angel. And their big siblings are Elijah, Amira, Joshua, Aiden, and twins, Kalissa and Caleb. All of these babies were born via in vitro fertilization. And if you'll remember earlier, I said it's pretty unusual to have higher order multiples which come from in vitro fertilization as opposed to ovulation induction and intrauterine insemination. In vitro fertilization or IVF is the process of stimulating the ovaries to make more ovulation sites and then going in and removing the oocytes or eggs from within those sites with a needle and then putting them basically in a petri dish with a sperm to allow them to make into an embryo. 
usually you would transfer one or two of those embryos into the uterus and freeze the rest of them. It is uh, not okay to do a whole lot more than that. There are some situations where it might be acceptable to do three, but generally we aim for single embryo transfer, one embryo being transferred, with occasionally two or three in really specific scenarios. The story has a little bit of a confusing chain of events. It seems like every single baby that she got pregnant with, she was recommended to and followed through with a fresh IVF cycle, which is unusual. Usually you'd use up the frozen embryos first, and then if you didn't get pregnant, you'd do another fresh cycle where you stimulate the ovaries and go in and get more, but it doesn't seem like that's what they did. And it sounds like in this final pregnancy, Natalie wanted to get rid of the frozen embryos because she didn't want to destroy them. She didn't feel okay with that, but she also couldn't keep paying to keep them frozen because it's very expensive. So she just wanted to transfer all of the frozen ones during one cycle. Her doctor told her that she had six. And so she said, great, I want to transfer all six of those frozen ones. But when you go back and look at the record review, it actually sounds like she had 29 that were frozen, which, I, your guess is as good as mine. And despite that, it sounds like he actually convinced her to just go ahead and do another fresh IVF cycle instead of using the frozen embryos, which makes absolutely no sense. So they went ahead and went through with a brand new IVF cycle. And he told her he would just transfer all the embryos that they made. He told her he transferred six. He actually, on review of medical records, transferred 12. Who knows what he actually did, but that's what the, they had documented is that they transferred 12. There is no scenario where that would be acceptable to do. Absolutely 100% medical malpractice, as is probably convincing her to keep doing all of these fresh IVF cycles. That doctor, Dr. Kamrava, was eventually uh, stripped of his license and board certification, which makes complete sense. But the story continues. As you know, she goes in, she is pregnant after the IVF cycle. She finds out she's pregnant with seven babies and at their birth at 31 weeks by C-section, it wasn't until Jeremiah was brought out that she realized she actually was having eight babies. Despite the controversy over their conception and birth, it seems like as of the most recent updates I can find, all 14 siblings, including the eight octuplets, are doing quite well now. So hopefully that is the case. As a final bonus, this set of quadruplets could not be left off of this list because I simply found them too incredibly interesting and amazing and also really stinking adorable. This is a set of monozygotic spontaneous quadruplets. That means one sperm and one egg got together and made one embryo, which split into four identical boys who are absolutely adorable. Chris and Jenny Marr had their quadruplets at 28 weeks by C-section. And as far as I can tell by scrolling through their Instagram, they all seem to be doing quite well at this point. As a five foot two person who has carried twins, I simply cannot imagine if there had been four babies in there, much less five, six, and especially not eight. If you're new and you want to subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. I genuinely love coming here and teaching you about things that I find so interesting. I'll see you next Monday.